Welcome, welcome. It's a pleasure to see you back again. Well, if you're a first time viewer, it's a pleasure as well. And what you are watching here is my wizard's tower that I was using on my online uh, single player stream with Mischief Maker. And it's actually a fairly simple build. It requires, well, basically a tower and a way up. And people were asking me, are you ever going to show me how to build that thing? Because it's actually really simple to make and it's extremely effective even early, mid or pretty late game as well. It isn't perfect by no means, but it definitely can save your bacon and your behind in a bind. And the great thing is you can actually get it up probably very easily in the first couple of days, so definitely by day 7. And after that you can just continue and upgrade it. But if you're looking for an easy way to stay alive or during the first uh, few Blood Moon Hordes, this one is actually pretty much top of my list. Unless you want to just hunker down on top of the, the rooftop of a normal PUI, because that works really well as well. But if you want to build something yourself, this one, I think, is one of my early game favorites. Yeah, it has the benefit of being pretty much 0% cheese. There's no cheese there at all, which is really good if you're lactose intolerant. The zombies run up to it, they path along it, and then you kill them or bounce them off it. It doesn't mean we can't put in any cheesy stuff, so I'll probably do that just to show, but you don't have to. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much for all your support of my channel. If this is the first time you are watching my videos, or maybe the second or third, and you haven't yet subscribed, then please do hit that subscribe button. That's how I grow and keep providing this content to you and to everyone, which is free. Well, let's get started. So, the main thing about this one is that you may to make it from, initially, flagstone. And flagstone is really simple. You simply make sure you have a bunch of cobblestone rocks. Four cobblestone rocks makes one flagstone. And how do you make cobblestone rocks? Really simple. Dig up some clay soil and get some stones and you have cobblestone rocks. It's really simple early on because the material is literally everywhere. And I'm actually not going to, I haven't really planned out how to make this because I think that's part of the fun of it. You find a location that sort of uh, looks good. This one is reasonably flat. I would probably do it nearby a trader. And I think there is a trader down there somewhere. I don't want to go too close though. And you just decide how you want to do it. So this is going to be one, two, three, four. Uh, should we do five? Let's do it five wide or five long. Five square, two, three, four, five. You can make this bigger if you want to. You could even use this technique simply on another PUI. You probably have to adapt it a little bit depending on what it is. And you basically make a square. So we're gonna build this up a few. And just to make this a little bit easier, later on, once you've built this, if you have excessive extra cobblestone, you probably wanna make sure you just upgrade everything. And you see one upgrade is another 10. But why would you do that? Well, the regular uh, flagstone block has 500 hit points, which is all right. The cobblestone has three times as much at 1500. So that definitely helps it survive. It normally doesn't take a ton of damage. So normally flagstone or cobblestone is really good. And then later on, when you start getting your, let's see, your concrete, concrete. Let me get some as well. Hello. Where is my concrete mix if I was concrete mix? Where would I be? I would be down there. Then you basically just upgrade it again and you end up with concrete. And beyond that, you can upgrade it once more time to reinforce concrete. And I'll show that later on. So it's really simple to just start off with something. You could make this out of wood. And if you're really brave, that's something you could consider doing. It does have some potential challenges if you only make it out of wood because wood doesn't take a lot of hits to damage and break. Because if we put down a frame, let's do a wood frame block here. Craft one here. Let's put that down here. You see this one has... Well, 50 hit points. If we upgrade it, and of course we don't have any wood. Why would we? <laughs> um, okay, that was a corny joke. Once you upgrade it, it has 225. So it's still half than a normal, well, actually half plus. It's 250, so 225 plus 50, so 275, which is still less than either flex and obviously, and definitely cobblestone. But if you have nothing else, you could theoretically make it out of wood. I just... I generally wouldn't want to build bases from wood though because, well, it's a little bit dangerous. So what I've done here, I've pre-painted a, 
cobblestone because I'm going to make this out of cobblestone, which saves me the effort of having to actually paint it afterwards. And uh, if you haven't seen how to do that, then check out my painting tutorial. It's really simple. At least if you're making a creative build, obviously survivor builds, you can't pre-paint them, but in creative, you can. If you're testing out a new concept or something, or you're making just creative building. So we're going to build this one up. And right now it is simple three high. And that's another good thing. You can actually make this almost as high as you want. I'm obviously, you don't want to make it a couple hundred blocks. And if you go up to 100 or something, you won't get anything to spawn. So you definitely want to make less than that, but something that is reasonable. So, and the reason why this matter is because I'm going to show, and let me get up a couple more here. Height does matter. If you make it too low, you don't give the zombies enough time to walk up slowly, 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 and that makes it a little bit harder. Height then basically is um, impacts how fast they get up to you. Let's see here. Let's see what we're going to do here is we're going to start with, let's see, one, two, three. Let's do something like that. Okay, so this one should be there and this one should be there. Sounds really good right now. I should, should be like this, this, this. And you might wonder, what is he really doing? Well, let me build it up a little bit more and that should be clear. And again, this is why you want to make sure that you have a bunch of resources. We're going to do something like this. We're going to then bring it down like this. You start maybe to see how it's actually taking shape. And in this case, the shape actually does matter. So you see on this corner, we have one out. We have two blocks in between them that have another one and this step goes down. So we do the same thing here like this. Then we're going to have one up and we're going to bring it down again. And we do the same thing as we get down here. Let's see. We have this one down and then we get one like this. Let's see, one, two, and do another one. Let's just bring that down like that. Yeah, that should work pretty well just to start off. So it looks fairly complicated, doesn't it? But it actually is really, really simple. And it doesn't really have to uh, be perfect. The, the main thing that you want to do is that you basically want to wind a path around your tower. And this is where it depends on how wide it is, because obviously the wider it is, the more of a path you have. If you have a really narrow one, which I just showed, which is actually just three by three, you have a lot less space to work with, which means that they run around really fast. So we have a simple thing here. We have the zombie comes up here, runs forward, jumps up here, and then Two things can happen. One, actually, three things can happen. One, he runs so fast that he runs off. Now he's off again, and then he has to go back and restart. That's one thing that can happen. Secondly, he comes forward, falls down, and now he needs to jump up again. So that's the second thing that can happen. He could also run around the corner or jump around the corner. That could happen as well. Doesn't really matter. If he falls down, really good. If he ends up down here, also really good because it takes him time to jump up. Either way, he ends up back here and he has to jump up, comes up here, falls down, runs forward, and then he repeats the same thing again. So you see that basically it's intended to just delay him. And I'll show you why that matters. So I'm going to stand myself up here. I am going to detach the camera. Let's do that. Right. And then I'm going to show what happens. So I'm going to spawn in a normal zombie i'm going to do feral because they're really a little bit faster so i'm going to attract this attention you see jumps up see how slow it is runs forward runs forward and oh he fell down stumbled a little bit that's the same thing jumps forward jumps up runs forward jumps up runs forward and stumbles if he's unlucky he actually ends up falling down now he's probably going to go up here and go closer to me yep. obviously because i don't have any wall here and you notice he actually coming from here until he was over here took him a really long time if you have a ramp or something he gets up really really quickly which is exactly what you don't want him to do you want it to take a long time because the longer time he take it gets to you then more time you have to actually kill them. It also spreads them out. If you have eight zombies that is running around and they're taking a long time to get up to you, you have a lot of time to shoot them. So we're going to continue building up here. I'm going to probably make it another, 
let's do another four here. The the thing about this one, you don't actually initially. So initially, what's needed is the basic path. You also have to make sure that you have something to hook things on by. So a lot of this one is actually strictly not needed. And I think if I take out, I can actually do that as well, like this. You actually can take, you don't have to take all these blocks if you have a problem with resources. The reason I would put them on is because it does save you in case they start to bash a little bit randomly and destroy some things. And that means that you get a lot more SI, but you could actually start doing this on pillars if you really want to do. I tend to just make sure I have enough resources, but if you have an issue with resources, you could actually just do it up on pillars because the technique is exactly the same. Okay, as you see, I have now made a few rounds around here and uh, let me just paint that slightly differently just to make it a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to show which areas they actually tend to spend a lot of time going up and down, which are these ones, not this one. Do that. This one, they also spend time. This one, they spend time. And all oh, this one and this one. Anytime they jump up or jump down, it takes them extra time. So that's really what we want. So something like this actually, and let me do the last one here and this one. And then let me paint everything else in a nice little yellow. So you can see the regular path that they're taking. And isn't that just so nice and colorful? And you can see the path much more easier. Yellow is where they basically will walk. Red is where they will walk, but it takes them extra time and effort to, uh, to actually path across because they have to jump up, jump up, jump up, jump down, everything. So that's uh, how that looks. And now we get to the top. Now the top really is up to you of how you want to do it. I like to uh, try to start by... Let's see if I can rotate this properly, something like this. Basically make a small little cubby hole that uh, is reasonably safe at least, because you do eventually end up having vultures and stuff like that. And you might want to just uh, save your effort and do like that. Get a little bit of a rooftop on it, something like that. And um, the zombies will come here and we're going to fill up here as well, but give me a moment with that. Let me not throw that. Now the question is, what do you do when to do on the front? And there's a few ways you can do that. One thing that I've always liked, and let's not rotate that one, let's change the shape, is to have flagstone poles. Now flagstone poles or concrete poles or whatever you want to have are really nice in the sense that if I can do something like that, they are nice because they actually aren't seen as obstructions for zombies. And that allows you to do some really interesting things. Let me upgrade these ones. Let's do that. Something like that. A zombie that comes up here will not go around here, especially if they put it up. They will stand here and they will bash. And that gives you more time to actually bash them yourself. Now poles, as I showed in a video previously, does have some problems with the damage that they take. And that's a little bit unfortunate. One thing you could consider is something like, let me find, Blackstone half blocks. They are a little bit better. They have less glitchy. They do occupy a little bit more of the space. And that can be a little bit of a trouble when you're actually trying to attack something. Let me get this one on the upside, something like this. It does give you a little bit of uh, bashing through. I think that crawlers and dogs and everything could theoretically get through. They tend not to want to do that. They'll try to actually go here rather than go in between. But this is one way you actually could do it instead. And basically just fill up something like that. So we're going to try these ones for now. Just to upgrade them to some cobblestone. And of course I'm going to have to paint them. Now here. This zombie here, if you have nothing here, they'll try to get through. So you definitely want to have something. Uh, same thing here, but this one, obviously, you have the corner. So there's a few things you can do here. You want to put a corner here. Again, just helps to block things off. So we have that, but you need something here. And this is, again, where you could, for instance, make use of the these ones. Put something like that if you want to have access to actually bash them. And then you do something like this, which gives you access from the top. Now, 
there's the pros and cons with using these songs versus using just um, the poles. Poles give you more access. These ones will probably give you the access to the head if you're standing here or there. When it's down here, they won't. Um, they also block a fair bit. You can't really get that close. But again, you have to see what really works for you. I like poles, but uh, they do sometimes often depending on how the zombies attack them end up glitching and they get stuck in them and they deal a lot of damage on them and that's something you want to take into account as well if you're all the way up to concrete and reinforced concrete i would definitely probably use poles here not here though here you want to make sure that the zombie doesn't path through and i think that these half blocks will be enough to disturb that and stop that if you have poles in the front that should work pretty well as well though we're gonna do that I'm gonna put a couple layers of these ones and sort of leave it at that another thing you could try on these sides is basically have some plates plates generally work fairly well in preventing movement and because they're a little bit thinner they give you more access as well something like this you see you have actually more more ability to get in a little bit closer and uh, shoot them for instance bashing you could but you might actually damage your walls as well. So you might want to just make sure you are shooting rather than bashing. So we're going to basically do the same thing on this side as well. So what about the roof? And that's a really good question. So what you could do and what I would recommend is giving you a way up. And we're going to put a hatch. You can probably easily get a metal hatch. So that should be working out just fine. If we put that down and opens the wrong way, of course, exactly not the way I want it to be. And this is better. <laughs> so having a hatch up and then we are not going to block off everything. We're going to do something like this. And then we're going to have, where did I put these ones? You could use, for instance, if you only have wooden bars, I would be a little bit careful about it. Because wooden bars have a problem because they take damage, excessive damage from the zombie vulture. So I would do something like potentially this, at least three in the in the middle there. You could do more. Something like this would work as well. That allows you to, if you are down here and you see the zombie vultures up there, you could just basically shoot them which is really, really useful because you don't want to have them just bashing. They don't deal extreme amounts of damage, but eventually they will actually make their way through. And these ones, definitely you want to make sure you're upgrading to oh, not necessarily to concrete that early, but at least to make sure you have cobblestone. So once you're up here, what I would recommend is uh, just put a couple of layers of wooden bars around. The reason will be really apparent really soon, but let's get those up first. Something like this is good to start off with, and of course, you probably guessed it already. It's to give you a good vantage point, because you want to make sure that the zombies have a good path towards you. Let me just do that. Have a good path towards you. So right now, they can actually run all the way up here, come here, and then they can jump up on the ladder, climb up and get you. So don't close this one if you are up here. When you're down here, you definitely want to close it so you don't get zombie vultures getting through there. But when you're up here, if you close this one, zombies might behave erratically and start to destroy things. But up here, you have a really easy way to just go around and shoot them. You can do headshots, you can do whatever you want to have. And if you really want to be adventurous, and this is something that I would recommend, but be careful, is you take out a few of these ones. Let's say I take out the second one, which is gonna be, you wanna make it the same way so you don't accidentally fall down. Something like this, because that allows you to throw down, for instance, small toss or pipe bombs and stuff like that. You might wonder what a maniac would actually leave it open like this. And actually, I am not going to. But I wanted to give you a few options of how you... Well, you want to be able to get in and out. And of course, you could follow the same path that the zombies do. That's a little bit tedious to go in and out that way. You could have, for instance... And let's do that. You could have a path inside here. And this is something that could be fairly useful. I have basically a hatch up something like this would work you have a door here and 
you have a ladder going this way the downside with that is that they could break through the door unless you reinforce it and then you have them in here and while that's not a huge problem it means that they can get stuck a little bit but this would work for way in and out another option would be to basically do something like let's say do like this do one more and then we're going to go down through this and I build up basically a simple pillar something like this we're going to take out this one and now you can easily just put in a ladders here and if you put them on the this one they won't even necessarily oop I'll take that out Oh, and take that out. Why are you turned this way? No, this way. If you do something like this, you have an easy way to get into your base as well. Without breaking a hole through your walls here. Even though actually that looks really neat. Now let's put that back. Here would just basically give you a way in and out. Zombies will net not take this way because they can't actually get up there. But you can. Climb up. When you get up here you can get a cross and have it you can fill this out if you want to having this off just makes it very unlikely that they want to path even if they accidentally get bumped up on the ladder because there's no path across so that could help you a little bit and then you basically can just fill all this up i'm going to put in a door here and i'm going to let's see do a door here as well so now we have a door here really good we have a door here so we can get in and out well, isn't that convenient? And just like that, we are pretty much ready. Now, there are a few things you can do to make this one even more efficient. If you do have a robotic sledge. So, if you do, then you can actually make it a little bit more efficient by, let's say, you take this one out. And we shift this one just ever so slightly this way. We have something like this. And that means that this one is going to be, let's do this one a little bit different color. This one now becomes red because they're trying to jump up here. We're going to do something like this. going to put this here. And it's not because they want them to actually go there. But let's do like this. So with this, we have expanded a little bit here on this side because we want to have space to put down our favorite little robotic sledge. So what happens is, is the zombies will go this way, come here. Sometimes they will actually try to bash here because that's what they can do. Sometimes they actually want to get up. Either way, what we want to do is we want to give them a little bit of a tap when that happens. We're going to put this one like that. So let's see. Let me show you, demonstrate how that works. One, two, three, four. Let's shoot. Okay, so now they've heard me. And they're starting their uh, their ascent here. And you see how slow it is? You know, they've only managed to make it four or five blocks. And one is about to fall down and she has to restart. Now, this is assuming it's Blood Moon Horde. She's getting stuck here. Okay, so we're going to have to do something about that. Sometimes they just happen to get stuck because they don't want to be some places. And you can actually... It depends a little bit on how you have... Let's get rid of her like that. Let's do that. And let's do something like that. Just to make sure that she doesn't do that. And uh, because these ones now are coming in. Well, actually, let's leave that. You see what it does? The turret is actually bouncing them as they get up here. And this one, because I have it on the fire, is actually setting them on fire. Look at it. And now they're dead. Now, depending on how you, you build this... They might or might not actually get bounced off entirely. Now she knows where I am. You saw it's really, really slow for them. And I was actually really safe inside. I didn't do anything manual. And these are still feral zombies, feral strippers. To see the red one, they come up and then they, they not ragdoll, but they stumble a little bit and uh, have a little bit of problems. So that one jumped straight, maybe because it went over the head or something. But otherwise, they have to basically jump up, jump down. And they are jumping together. Well, they are sisters. They look the same. Maybe they're twins. And sometimes they fall all the way down and have to restart. Now, when there are just a few of them, they're not so uh, so clumped together, which may, may, makes it less likely. Okay, they actually lost center of me because they took so long. So I have to shoot a little bit. And now she fell off. 
And that's one of the things that happens when they jump up or down. Sometimes they simply ragdoll and, well, they fall down like this one. Let's see, she gets up here. She gets banged a little bit. She gets banged as well. And now they're on fire, which is even more effective. If not, fall down. And I think that one died and she burned to that. See, I didn't have to do anything. I just have a junk sledge. And this is a level one junk sledge. Now, if you don't want the junk sledge to actually kill them, or you don't want to kill them here, you want to just have it tap and bounce them down, you do have to change this whole place just a little bit. Because you want to make it such that, let me see something like, I get it like this. You want to make sure you have enough space for them to actually jump around there. So let me repaint this a little bit. You want to make sure they actually ragdoll further. So let's do that here. Let's do one there. And we have this one jumping up here. Let's see how that actually works. Let's um, get in here again. So I made some changes here. As you can see, I basically changed it up so that they have a little bit easier to fall down. See, this one will tap them. All right. <laughs> if they actually make it up here, can I bring in uh, let's bring a couple more like this. You see they come up here and they get bounced and because there's enough space for them to fall down, they generally will fall all the way down. Now if there are too many of them, you see she tried to jump up here, but this one managed to recover. And you see now, they do get set on fire and sometimes they land here, sometimes they get, actually quite often, then end up getting actually pushed all the way down. Now let's see what happens here. She fell down, she, nope, she's not dead yet, will be, and there she's off. So just tweak a little bit how you're doing it just to give them more of a fall so that they don't just stay here. If I brought this back one like it was original, they would tend to always fall around this area, which means you would get more experience, but you do have the potential for more jumping through and coming to bash your door. And this is a good example of what can happen. So eventually they will actually get through very likely because if you're having a blood wound horde well they will be keep on coming and there are going to be times where the turret is turned a little bit and you see in this case this is uh, something else that can happen basically the zombie gets pushed through and this is where you want to make sure you actually have a weapon you can actually bash them in the face so the zombies can get pushed through the poles by using the junk sledge, which is really interesting way of uh, handling them. But eventually, like I said, they will end up outside of your door. And this is why you want to be a little bit semi-active at least, because if they end up outside of your door, just give them a little bit of a whack because the junk sledge would not be able to take care of them. And like I said, this is a good place to just stand here, just to shoot them as they go around here. You will be able to tell where they actually end up stopping. Like you see, you know, this place is somewhere they generally tend to just stumble. Same here, which gives you a good opportunity to just shoot them while she fell down. All right, I'm gonna pause here and let's go have a look to see where the damage is. There will be some damage after a big horde, so you have to be a little bit careful. And there are a couple of ways to combat that. One, make sure you have, so on these ones, you see there's very little damage here, but these ones sometimes take damage. I make sure I have a block underneath. So if this one gets taken out, basically means they don't jump up here, but they can continue running. You'll see, same thing here. This one has a block under it, has a block under it, has a block under it, because if this one takes the damage and gets taken out, they'll still just run past, which is just fine. It just means that they will not be a slow down. You see here was, again, a little bit here because they get a little bit stuck and get frustrated. This one has no damage. This one had a little bit and you could probably do something. Well, actually, it has a block underneath, you can see. So that one is fine. And let's look at this last one. No damage. This one does a little bit, so we probably should have another block down there as well. Just to make sure that if it does get broken, that they have somewhere to path. If there's no way to path, that's when you start having a big problem because they start taking out the rest of the structure. And that's another reason when you do get concrete, upgrading at least the pillars on the corners really helps a lot. Upgrading all of it obviously helps you even more, but upgrade the one where you see them having a little bit of damage taken during the horde. Further defenses that might be fairly useful is spike it up. Put spikes around. Make sure you don't block the pathing. And the reason we want to have these ones here is because zombies are, well, they're funny. They like to run into spikes. Having them too high means that they will tend 
to avoid bashing things that are uh, next to the wall. And that's of course is really good. It also means that if they happen to fall off and stumble in, they get killed by the stumble itself. If you really wanted to as well, you could also put, for instance, some barbed wires here. You have to be careful though. Don't block off. Meaning that putting something like this generally should be fine because they will come here and they'll get slowed down. If you put them up here or here or here, they might actually decide that, hey, this is uh, something that is blocking me and they go somewhere else. Some of them, this one might be okay, actually. They'll probably take that as a block that they can run on, but you want to make sure you don't block off this one. If you put spikes all over here, you might think that, hey, they're going to take the spikes uh, out before they actually climb. And they might actually de decide that, hey, it's uh, so much of a hassle to run all the way through here and have to bash my way through spikes. So they basically just end up bashing down here. And that's definitely something you want to avoid. Something also to keep in mind, higher level sledges are better because it means that for one, they generally deal more damage, which always is helpful. It also allows you to have more mods on them. At the end, when you're having a fully kitted out one, you can do massive damage, 21 per hit, which is really, really useful. Another thing you want to take into account is that if you do have the intellect uh, attribute as well, as you go up to this one, you'll see that they actually deal more headshot damage, which helps. And you can do robotics inventor. And as you go down with that one, you can craft better ones, but they also deal more damage. As you can see, 30% more damage here, but they have a 90% faster fire rate. And that's really helpful when you're having junk sledges because it means that they can take care of a lot more of the zombies. So make sure you upgrade to the newer and better ones because that really can help you. And make sure you have some, just some regular weapons like, let's see my, my pistol here in case they break through. So I'm going to start a horde here and uh, one of the downsides of being high level is that I have a really high game stage. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch out to a slightly better herd as well. But I'm going to start a game stage, uh, probably going to be around 151, which is really, really high. I'll do day seven or something so to keep the game stage and we'll see what I get. One problem with this kind of base design is that damage can prove to be a big challenge. If you manage to set off the C4 while well, you have a bad day, you won't get the demolishers really early on anyway. So either way, you should be safe at least into early mid game. And we're getting the Blood Moon Horde here. And let's see where they end up spawning. Are they, they're coming in from this side. It doesn't really matter very much. I would probably be getting a bunch of Yep, I'm getting a bunch of these ones, of the radiated ones as well. Now you see these ones are actually trying to climb up on the spikes. That's why they are killing themselves as well. That depends on how you have the spikes laid out. In this case, it doesn't really matter. It just means that they will jump on each other a little bit. They'll take out the spikes. And once the spikes are down, they should be coming from this side anyway. So let's see here. Okay, so one is up. One and a half is up. You see now the spikes are being taken out and they come here. And you'll see... She was stuck on the bar wire that makes it really hard for it to progress. They will take out the bar wire really fast though, so don't really rely on these ones. Maybe if it's the day 7 or 14 hole, they will stop them enough for you to take some pot shots, but most of the time they will get through them really fast. You see this one is already taken out. So it's a delaying tactic and I'm not going to do anything yet. I'm going to see how this turns out as they come up. You're getting a, I'm getting a lot of radiated because my game stage is, as I was saying, well, 152. You won't get this high game stage. You will get your eight zombies, but you definitely will not get the green radiated ones this early. So after all this time, one actually died. I think she died on the, on the barbed wire. She took enough bleed damage. And they still haven't made it up. So one spawned in because one died and... Well, they're still racing all the way up. Let's see what happens. Some of them are definitely taking a long time and now she gets bumped off. So she made it all the way up here and the one that followed her just fell down as well. So we're now at 2240 and not a single one has actually made it up beyond the junk sledge. 
So almost an hour in, and only one made it up to actually get hit by the junk sledge. And this is at high game stage. So let's see here. 45 minutes in, three of them made it up to get bashed by the junk sledge. So you can imagine how powerful this is. I mean, you're going to be sitting here, and during the first, let's say, one hour in-game, you might have maybe five, maybe three, maybe two zombies that actually make it all the way up. So if, even if I didn't have the junk turret, or the junk sledge rather, see, there he goes. Even if I didn't have the junk sledge, I would have had no problems actually killing them because by the time they come up here, and again, they won't be irradiated, you can just bash them in the face because, well, they'll come one at a time or something. So now we are one hour in and, oh, this one, and this is why, again, you want to make sure you are, oh, you like that. Let's take him out. We have uh, obviously our, our pistol here. Take him out, shoot him, kill him because they can get bashed in through the wall here. And now you actually see they actually take a little bit of damage as they're trying to get in through this one. So we repair this one, taking a little bit of damage, but not too bad. So if you want to have a little bit more fun, you want to make sure you check for any vultures. Let's see, I can come up here. There's one here, shoot him in the head. Oh, he didn't quite fall out. Let's do that. He's a little bit stuck there, which is fine, but he goes... No, he didn't fall down. He stumbled a little bit, but not too bad. There he did. Set on fire. Shoot him. So even with a crossbow, you're doing fairly, fairly well. And of course, if you've got a pistol or something, you've got a shotgun, you've got a hunting rifle, you could even... If you have a marksman rifle, those are really good as well. You can actually do quite a lot. And if you have something else, let's say you have a pipe bomb actually it's gonna to be too late yep too late come on come on they all none of them are coming up eh, that's the downside when it's too good say okay here's one come on yes let's bring this one down can we come up in time to not much oh he's stuck here so i think he i don't know he jumped something but he can't really do much he's trying to climb up and there he's dead. Here we have a few more. Let's bring that one down. You could use some Molotovs. Let's do that as well. Molotovs are... Ooh, be careful so you don't throw them at yourself like I almost did. That'll set them on fire as well. So I wish I could tell you that it was a lot more exciting. A lot of close encounters here that you're almost going to die and everything. But actually, it's not. Now, this is actually not an extremely high tower, as you can see. It's uh, basically winding its way one, twice, and then up to where I am. But, depending on how wide and you make it, it still takes them such a long time to go around because of the mechanism where they take a little bit of extra time jumping up and falling down from blocks. And you see the dog is trying to get up. You got to... Uh, bashed off or rather fell off because there was something else in the way and a lot of them don't make it all the way and if they do well they get a little bit of a tap here by our good little friend the junk sledge and if you are lucky it even sets him on fire and he falls all the way down and takes some burning damage and of course a little bit of fall damage so this is what I would call the Wizard's Tower because it's almost magical how easy it is to avoid a Blood Moon Horde. You have to be a little bit uh, active, you see there. There are times where they will make it through, like you saw the Junk Sledge was facing the wrong direction. So the Spider Zombie actually could make it up and regular zombies could do that as well. So you have to be a little bit aware and just kill them if they're outside of your door because otherwise, well... Then he'll just get in eventually and he'll probably kill you. So don't just go AFK, but be aware that at some point they might make it up to the platform and you have to do something about it. You could, of course, combine that with some other traps. You could have a blade trap up there. So if it ends up where he is, you would get killed by the blade trap. But that's really more advanced. Just being semi-active when you're fighting here would be more than enough. And one thing I didn't show is how do you deal with the marshes in a build like this? Well, really good question. Why don't you tell me? I'm sure you have some ideas yourself. Tell me in the comment section below how would you deal with demolishers with a build like this? But right, hope you enjoyed that. And of course, you made sure to subscribe right if you aren't already. Thank you very much. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Stop.
special thanks to the great patrons supporting the channel. If you would like to join the Vedic community and support these videos, do follow the Patreon link.